Today we're going to be going over AI for bug bounty and the three different use cases that you can use this for. So let's just get right into it. The first use case is going to be research and learning. So here you'll be able to research about certain bugs, but also get the chatbots to help you learn them. And the good thing about AI and these chatbots is that you can get information from them infinitely and they won't get annoyed at you for asking questions. Next is data formatting. Data formatting is extremely useful when you are trying to craft some certain requests or trying to break through ways that companies are formatting their data. So we'll dig into both of those later. And then lastly, reporting. Reporting is somewhat of a long task. And especially if you're trying to capture multiple attack vectors into one report, AI can help speed this up. So here's a sample for a sample prompt for learning. So if you want to learn how a certain researcher did something in a report, you could just ask it to summarize this report and turn it into a lesson. So here I took a report from HackerOne's activity, which was a email verification bypass. And basically it broke it down into steps for me. And from there, I was able to understand exactly what the issue was and how they found it. Here, here's one that is more for the research side of things. So if you needed to help understand certain types of logic, this can also get into data formatting. But I didn't know what, what other dates to try, so it gave me some out-of-range dates some edge cases and then it also gave me some other other days to try to see what what would happen within the um, system when i tried these dates another thing to keep in mind when you're conversing with these chatbots is to make sure that you're not sending any confidential or company data that isn't already publicly available sorry about the different voice quality changes i'm working with a new setup here but Right now we are using deep research by perplexity to find business logic vulnerabilities and as you can see it gathers sources and also does the reasoning. So this is a great place to start your research, learning about new bugs and actually walking you through the research. So let's take a look at Nahamsek's website here as one of the sources. And as you can see, this is a path to $100,000 in bug bounty. So these are the bugs he's going over to look for. So let's look for business logic. Here we go. And in this business logic section, he's talking about race conditions, which is extremely important for business logic bugs because of things like messaging with messing with transactions or limited rate purchases just like he mentions here so in the transactions we can do them at the same time or buy more than just one item so this is a great example of how to use ai for your research um, and also just to find new ways or new attack vectors to find these bugs so like you can see here this is bringing us back to race conditions by going over the normal attack vector and basically laying out all of the steps you need to take to, in order to do so. Next, for data formatting, the first thing you can use it for is to understand certain schemas. So within GraphQL, introspection, or just any API schema, you can feed it that data and it will basically return the data but also maybe what it does and what could happen if this was abused so i gave it some sample graphql data and it basically returned this table showing me all about the uh, schema so i was able to narrow down my attack from there next you can actually get it to help you format that data so once it knows the schema you can help it you can use it to help build out the actual calls so you don't have to meticulously type in or craft these queries by yourself but once again you should make sure that you're doing this with publicly available data and not sending anything confidential to the company or the chatbot lastly for reporting 
You can help it give you templates so that you can easily just plug and play these reports. Um, you definitely don't want to just copy the AI generated steps or whatever, because you need to talk, talk to these triagers like they're humans and kind of break it down from your perspective and not just from what a computer thinks is wrong with the vulnerability you're producing. But this will help you get a easy format and um, help you be more descriptive within within your reports. There has also been a release of new AI powered tools or tools that are now using or incorporating this into their existing workflows. The newest one being Burp Suite it uses this AI powered extension capability in the professional version to be able to create extensions that use AI. So here, this one will convert tags based on any language that you give it. Um, and then the list just goes on for, for what you can do in here and you'll do this through the credits. Now, an alternative to Burp Suite's AI plugins is Shift. And Shift is just like the just like the other one it's an extension that comes into catio um which uses ai uh and you can just watch this video from the rhinator and it'll basically explain all the features but it uses uses this ai to help reformat some things within catio or do some things with encoding and decoding um another another tool that uses AI now or use it in its workflow is nuclei simply by adding the tack AI flag you can use natural language to specify what you want to detect so he gives a bunch of examples here to find an admin key or to detect exposed stack traces and the list goes on lastly cursor now this is a code editor that has AI directly built in to it and all of the different models. Basically this will help you create proof of concept extremely fast or in overall just help you reformat large amounts of data. But with these four tools you can get a lot of work done and you can learn a lot of new things.